All right, here we go. Episode 65 of High School Hoops. Um, before we jump in, let me give a big shout out to our two big sponsors, Dr. Dish. I think they might hopefully sponsor us next year. Um, great shooting machine. Most innovative thing out there, in my opinion. Crazy good. Crazy good. I think they even have a home one now. So look into that. And then go over and join teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. Great resource. You know, we're, we're the target of of that niche. So if anybody's looking, there's cheaper ones <laughs> and there's more expensive ones. You know, you can go to Bloomingdale's. Or you it can go it to also talks, it's Walmart. interactive. It's, it is. It's it interactive. Is. You, you can, you can get, join a lot of different websites with resources, but there's not that interactive piece. No, no one has my personal email. Like, nope. I'm not, most of the, yeah, the one that's charging five ninety nine, dollars uh, they're not giving out their personal emails and responding to them. Now. Correct. Yes. So and I'm the tar- I'm and your I'm, craft is always changing and your teams are always changing. Right. And you never know when that question is going to come up. That's the right. kicker. All right. So this week, this week's a fun one, coach. What are we doing this week? Well, you know, film is such a big thing in high school basketball and um, more than ever with the, the, the context of huddle and crossover. And I mean, you've been doing film forever. You constantly talk about how you had two tapes going and, and I mean, we could talk about how we have you film, but I really want to focus today on, how watching film with players, how to be effective with it. I think that film can be very effective and film is such a broad thing, but how as coaches at the high school level, can we be effective with our players and viewing it? That's a great, those are great. That's a great question. So a couple things. First of all, um, I think film needs to be broken down into different pieces. Um, so I'll just, I'll give you an, a, an example. So we play on Saturday. We don't play until the following Friday. So Monday, we would watch film. So Sunday would give me time to break the film down and look at it. And Sunday, we would look at maybe 10, 15 minutes worth of film. Here's what we did well. Here's what we didn't do well. Big synopsis. Um, that's the first thing. I, and I do two types of film breakdown in that one. I do, I do game film and I do bench film. Because I, t- I started to film the bench. Um, so I will show them, look at this. This is the way the bench needs to act. This is good. This is bad. Um, because those guys are just as important as the five guys that are playing. So um, it's, a, it's, it's a unique thing. You need two cameras. You need one face in the bench and one face in um, uh, the play or going with the play. But it, it, it seemed to have helped the bench and the excitement and all that because they know I'm watching. So that's, a, that's, that's one thing. So I do, I do team there. Then on Tuesday and Wednesday of that week, so we're playing on Friday, Tuesday, um, Tuesday I would do individual um, film sessions with kids. And I've changed on that a little bit. I didn't, I never did that before, but I'll grab a few kids and say, hey, let's come on in during lunch and we'll watch some of your clips. Um, here's what you're doing well, here's what you're not doing well. Um, I wish I had the time to do it for everyone, I don't. Um, so it kind of depends on the next opponent and kind of what happened in that previous game. And then Wednesday and Thursday of that week, playing on Friday, Wednesday and Thursday of that week, we turn our direction to our next opponent. Um, so if it's opponent X, then we will come back and probably have a longer film session than the one on us. Cause you know, the problem with when they are watching themselves, um, they're just watching, they're watching themselves. That's it. Right. <laughs> Um, so that's why the individual one's good and kind of the t- general team one is good. Um, cause they're all narcissistic at that age. Anyway, they're all thinking about themselves and what they're doing on the court. Um, so then uh, I can, I tend to have their attention better in the opponent scout because they're not in it for the most part, unless we're going second round or something. Um, so then I will do, I will do a longer film session. So like if we have a late practice, I will, you know, maybe we're six to eight or six to seven thirty. I'll bring them in for forty-five minutes before that. So I like to do film sessions prior to um, the practice. I think that's a good thing to kind of to show them this is what this is what the opponents are going to do. Here's how we're going to handle screens. Here's how we're going to handle defense. Um, so that the the shift has been um, the individual for me over the years has been I've always done film, but the individual part. Um, the the shortening of it a little bit. Um, I swear I used to do like hour film sessions. Um, I just lose them at that point. They're just 
especially if they're in that tape, they're just watching themselves. So um, how do you do film code? Well, what I, I think when the one thing that we need to talk about film in general to be effective is that you have to have a plan and points of emphasis. I just yeah. think you can't come in and, you know, hey, we're going to go watch film today. I, I, right. I guarantee you, not made am I here to stereotype any, but there's coaches out there that say we're going to watch film. You're, what does it mean to watch film? You know, what are the things that you're looking at? You know, I think that you have to have points of emphasis that you're looking at for and having those kids notice those things and even having them say, hey, coach, stopping the film and showing them this is what you were talking about. I think it's got to be interactive with them. They need to know what you're looking for a little bit. I think often we're watching film and, well, that's great, but they need to be involved in watching the process my other question is do you watch it in clips or do you watch it in full or is it a mixture oh that that will depend like so so for my scrimmage i watched it in full because i wanted to get the flow um the individual stuff i tend to do more clips because i'm i'm basically showing them on their offensive end right um and then i'll grab clippets of like a four minute span when they're in to show them the flow of it um but in, in opponents, it tends to be, does not tend to be clips unless, unless, <laughs> so there's hopefully none of them listen to this, but if, um, if the opponent's not as good, then we tend to show them only offensive makes or something like that. Right. Look better. Yeah. Um, if it's, if it's, I, I like, I like flow when we're watching opponents. So I like to watch longer clips and look at how they're getting up and down the court and look how they're converting to defense. Um, so that that kind of is is dependent um for us we don't we don't when i'm watching us it tends to be entire clips long stretches of game film rather than clips um unless we're not doing something well unless we're not playing man and then we'll just grab all the man clips or if we're not closing out on three-point shooters if there's a point of emphasis for that day or that week in practice then i'll do clips but um again i'm, I'm gonna i want to look at the flow of it um, tends, to be, tends to be a better teaching tool at that point. What about using film to highlight and important and emphasize things that you want throughout your whole program? Do you ever take time to do that? I do. Like, um, a hustle, like a hustle moment or a really good sequence of offense or a really good sequence of defense. Yep. I think charges. We always, showed, we always showed charges. Yep. Um, we always screenshot the charge and then put it in the locker room. Very cool. Because that's taking a charge is you're sacrificing yourself Your at body. that point. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, we do it some, but I, I'm not sure, you know, um, if it's definitely something we have to work on, we'll show them a lot of clips. But I think the biggest shift I've done is making less, less time breaking it apart and having smaller times of smaller sessions instead of just doing a long session. Yeah. I would say that's one thing that I've learned. Also, I've been able to be able to get, if you got a big enough gym and you got a projection board, it's nice that you can even put the film right in your gym. Right. You able to do it right in the context of your practice. And yeah. I like front loading. Like you said, if anytime possible, I think it's more effective to talk about it and then do it on the court yeah. instead of vice versa. Now does every schedule work that way? No, not necessarily, but it could be even the point of, say you have a, um, early practice on Wednesday and you have another early practice on Thursday, but you won't get film. You might be better off doing a film session on that Wednesday instead of that Thursday after that practice. I think it's really important to constantly front load before the next practice for an opponent. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. I I just think it's, you know, they start to hear that verbiage. They start to have a little bit of schema and I'm talking like an educator now, but you know, right. They're, they're kind of clueless if you haven't talked about it and addressed it. I think they're just more aware, and I think you could find more success if you front load your film before yeah. practice. I like I like front loading. I can't always do it. Right. Um, no, it, it, it doesn't always work that way. And it just it's hard. They've been with me for an hour and forty five or something. Now we got to go watch film. It's like, and I got to try to keep. So those sessions, I would I would say those sessions tend to be shorter than the other ones. Right. Um, if I'm front ending, I feel like I got their attention. Now when I front end on that end, I know I'm going to lose them on the back end. Right. So I know practice is going to have to be more condensed because um, I know after that first hour 20, I'm going to start losing. I mean, they, anything more than two hours, you're going to lose them. You just Big time. Um, and that's what I'm saying. We, you, have to, you have to have a strategic plan and you have to have a purpose if you're going to have film. Yeah. And, 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 and putting film. stuff in, I have found out putting stuff in, especially in practice, has nothing to do with film. But 
it does because of the film. If you have a long film session, then you try to go have a long practice. That's hard because they bang each other. Right. Um, I find that I'm, I'm, I'm putting more and more of new cerebral stuff in early. Um, just because I tend to have them locked and loaded earlier than later. I, I saw that, gosh, I saw that about a week ago. I was trying to put something in late. And now, and this is something we have done on, um, we played, we played on Saturday. We had one practice. So the over Thanksgiving, we played at Thanksgiving on Thursday, practiced on Friday, and played on Saturday. I put something in on Saturday and did it on Saturday night just to see how they would adjust. And then I told them after the game, well, here's why we did this. We wanted to see how, you know, you know, in the most important game of your entire life, you're going to play on Friday night and then you're going to play on Saturday night at the Kohl Center. <laughs> Can you – because we're going to have to adjust. You're not worried right. about Saturday. You're worried about Friday. So I wanted to see how it worked. And we, we did pretty well. I'd give them like a B. Give them a, um, That's awesome. That. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? No, I think the key, you know, just some really key points of planning and being aware of time and having purpose and going back to the whole why. And we constantly talk that about every session is, you know, why are you doing it? Are you just right. doing it because that's what – high school coaches do are you doing it with it to to benefit your program and do that right do it with a purpose do it with a purpose all right all right, all right coach. next week coach bye see ya